So clear variable names, independent functions, all of those things that maintain clean code principles, I would say try to follow them and try to follow them in your day-to-day, -to, -day, to be honest. <laughs> hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel. So I thought I'd switch up the scenery today for a very important topic. So today we're going to be talking about software engineer technical interview tips. That was a mouthful. We're going to be talking about technical interviewing tips. So I remember when I first started out a few years ago interviewing for tech companies and whether it was for my internship or right after I graduated from university to find my first full-time job. And I'd like to think I've learned a few things since then, especially since I've also interviewed at larger tech companies like Google and Amazon. And I've also since then been interviewing myself, interviewing candidates who come to my company, looking for a good fit and want to join our team. So I know there's a lot of people out there who are either starting their engineering careers, like I was a few years ago, or even just looking to make a career switch into tech. And boy, have I got some tips for you. But anyways, I thought to help all of you out, I would make a compilation of everything I've learned from the interviewee side, as well as the interviewer side. So without further ado, let's just jump right in and take a sip of coffee. All right, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is the interview prep. So you can't go into an interview without prepping. You, you probably should prep before you go. So we're gonna cover a few bases over there first. So my first tip is to review and update your resume. So you wanna make sure your resume stands out and catches the eye of the recruiter and the interviewer who will be interviewing you. So this includes all the important things you want to highlight about yourself, including your technical experiences, any technical events that you've gone to, or just anything about yourself that you might want a recruiter to know. If you went to a hackathon lately, go ahead, throw that in. That's probably a good experience that you wanna share with a company that's in the tech space. I'd also say try to keep this to about one page if you can, two pages max, but ideally one page just because this is something that interviewers and recruiters go through a lot of. And so trying to be concise and really highlighting the things about yourself that you want a technical company to know is the best thing you can do. Something I would also advise is that if you have a section highlighting all the technical technologies that you're comfortable with, make sure this is up to date because for example, when I was in university, I learned C but I don't remember C and I have not been using it to my, in my day to day, so I don't highlight it as proficient anymore. I would definitely say go through your resume and make sure you reorganize any of the skills you have to make sure they match your comfort level. I personally don't want any interviews asking me any C questions because of that, so you probably shouldn't either if you aren't as comfortable with certain technologies as you were in the past. Maybe list them as knowledge in or have used in the past so that an interviewer doesn't just throw you a question about it. Also, keep in mind that everything you have on your resume is fair game to be asked about during an interview. My next tip is to have some projects to talk about, whether it's a hackathon project, a side project, or a company project that you worked on, of course, excluding any NDAs. Make sure you know it inside out so that if a technical recruiter or an interviewer asks you questions about it, you can riff off everything you know and really showcase all of the things you've learned throughout this project. So definitely brush up and review your experiences on your resume as well, just so you're ready to really shine. Before you interview with a company, you also want to make sure you have some questions you want to ask them. Whether this is about company culture or the tech stack or even the interviewer's favorite experiences at this company, make sure you have something because not only are the interviewers scoping you out, you're also scoping them out. This could be your full-time job or your internship. You want to make sure it's a good fit for you as well. So make sure you have some questions on anything you might want to know to make sure this company will be a good place for you to be as well. This also just shows the interviewer that you have genuine interest in the company. All right, so for this next one, I've said this to a lot of people. Interviewing is a skill. And just like any other skill, you need to practice it. So my suggestion would be to pick a language, your favorite language, whatever that might be, whether it's Go, whether it's Python, JavaScript, whatever you want it to be, pick it and drill some questions on it, algorithm and data structure type questions. You want to make sure that at the end of the day, you're comfortable doing these interview style questions in a language of your choice. And if you're applying for a front-end position, maybe brush up on some front-end frameworks as well, just in case you get thrown any questions related to that too. A great resource that I'm sure every software engineer making a video like this is also sworn by is Cracking the Coding Interview. I'd say if you're comfortable with every section in the language of your choice of Cracking the Coding Interview, as well as some, let's say, lead code style questions, I'd say you're prepared for an interview. I'd actually also recommend lead code for interview style questions. I've personally used it a lot in the past and gone as far as getting premium when I'm interviewing for companies. And I would definitely, definitely recommend it. And my last tip when it comes to interview prep is sleep well, relax, and on the day of, just have fun. You wanna make sure you're well rested for your interview and not 
just exhausted and your mind is just can't function. You don't want to feel like that. So have a good eight hours or whatever works for you in terms of amount of sleep. Relax. And my dad always, always used to tell me, just have fun with it. You're scoping them out too. It's not just a one way street. So make sure you go in there wanting to learn something new and just enjoy the experience. So now for the actual interviewing, I'm going to drink some coffee first. So now for the actual interviewing, after spending a lot of time on both sides of the table, I'd say I have quite a few tips on this section just by itself. So first things first, take your time to read the question and then also take your time to clarify it. When you're done reading the question, don't just start coding without saying anything. If you had an interior designer come into your house or a home renovator, you don't just see them start hacking at walls or painting walls different colors. They ask you what your preference is, what dimensions you want to see, how you want your space to be organized, and you need to approach the problem the same way. You want to read through the question, the basis of this problem, and then make sure you clarify with the interviewer about any edge cases you might have caught in the question itself, any inputs that you need to handle. For example, can I, if I get an X input, should I throw an error? So you want to treat this as a pair programming interview and fully understand the problem that you will be solving with your partner, essentially, the interviewer. And most importantly, if something doesn't make sense in the question, just ask. It's totally fine to ask questions. In fact, it is encouraged. A tip on my end to make sure that you're understanding the problem correctly is paraphrase the problem back to your interviewer. That way it also shows them that you're really trying to understand and get a good foundation before you dive into a solution. So why does the interviewer care? The interviewer at the end of the day is there to take a peek into how you break down a problem and that includes how you break down the problem in your head and digest it. So this encompasses the kinds of questions you think about when you read a problem, the kind of edge cases that you think of and anything that might seem unclear to you So and see how you go about tackling those things that are unclear to you. And those questions that you ask are also a great insight for the interviewer to know the kinds of things that you think about when you digest a problem. So my next tip is actually to plan out and maybe even pseudocode your solution. So this comes off my last point of wanting to break down the problem efficiently. You also want to plan it out. Having a good plan is the foundation to your solution. You want to build on that understanding from the last stage. So whether that's taking notes, drawing diagrams, writing comments, anything, just put it out there and make sure that you have a step-by-step -step plan that you know you are going to follow. And even just talk it out with your interviewers. Say, for example, that to solve problem X, I will be doing A and B and calculating what comes out of A and B to calculate C. So first of all, this shows the interviewer how you're planning on tackling the problem and it's not just in your head, it's out there so they can follow along too. And secondly, if for whatever reason you don't finish the solution, the interviewer has an understanding of what you were planning to do if you had more time. Right back to why does the interviewer care? So as we said before, the interviewer wants to take a peek into your brain and this includes how you break down and how you go about planning out your solution to a problem. And as I said before, if for whatever reason you don't have time to finish your solution, the interviewer can refer back to your plan so they know what you were going to do if you did have time. All right, my third tip is to start with the simplest solution and then come back and refactor. So most of the time a problem will have multiple solutions that you could go with. And most of the time, the most optimal solution will probably not come to you right away. Unless it does, in which case props to you, cause that's awesome. So it's totally fine to start with the simplest solution first and then keep building on it. That way, as you start coding and get a clearer picture of the type of implementation you want and start seeing even patterns, for example, maybe if checks that are all similar and you could find a way to make them more concise, those kind of patterns that you see will only happen as you start coding. But going with implementing the quickest solution first so that you have something that works and then coming back to refactor is an important skill that the interviewer wants to see too. This is also the quickest way to a working solution and to make sure your plan is sound and you meet the requirements before you go ahead and try to improve on your solution. Also, for whatever reason, again, that you don't finish your actual solution, at least you have something that works there in place and you can talk to your interviewer about what you would do to refactor to have it in a more optimal state next time. Why does the interviewer care? So just like in this interview, in real life, most likely an optimal solution won't come to you right away. It's an important skill to be able to go back and refactor your code as well and improve it and make sure it's in a clean, well-organized and also efficient state. 
Because most of us do this on a day-to-day, -day, the interviewer also wants to see how you refactor, and it's important information for them as well to see how you go about iterating over a solution. All right, so next tip. You might be in a whiteboard-style interview or something in a code editor, but either way, I would recommend testing your code as you go. If you have a code editor-style interview, then you can go ahead and run some cases on the side as you finish functional pieces. Otherwise, do the same thing, but with a whiteboard interview. Go ahead and manually go through a a test case that you come up with and go line by line and think about how the code would execute for each line in your given test case. This helps you make sure that your code is working as you go, as well as shows the interviewer that you prioritize testing. It also just helps you confirm that overall you're on the right path and your algorithm works as expected. Why does the interviewer care? So coding is now definitely one of the main things we do day to day as engineers, but testing is also important. There's no point in writing code that doesn't work. And showing that to an interview that you care that your code works is a very important thing for them to know. It also shows them the kinds of things that you would test and how you would go about testing, your testing practices. It all comes back to showing the interviewer what you prioritize when you tackle a solution. For more information on my hot takes on testing and the things I've learned, click over here to my video about my five tips on testing. And finally, the most important tip I could probably give when it comes to tackling the technical portion of an interview is treat the code you're writing as if you're writing it for production. The technical interview is the closest experience both you and the interviewer will get when it comes to working together without actually working together. So it's important for them to know how you would write code if it went into production. And it's important for you to show that if you are working at this company, how would you write your code? How would you organize it? How would you name your variables? Things like that, even though they might be small, they're actually really important when it comes to building a healthy ecosystem for your code base. In most cases, you won't be the only one working on this code base. So how you interact with your code is a very good indicator of how you will interact with a code base that is shared with a team. So clear variable names, independent functions, all of those things that maintain clean code principles, I would say try to follow them and try to follow them in your day to day, to be honest. <laughs> but overall, this is your chance to show your practices and your philosophy when it comes to writing code in general, especially for production. So to take it a step further from the previous points, this is your chance to also show how you would work with a team, whether it's code related or even with your interviewer, if this were to be treated like a pair programming exercise, and also a way for you to show how you would actually break down a problem if it were to come to you in a company space. Again, why does the interviewer care? So the interviewer cares because again, this is also the closest thing they will get to you actually working with them or them working with you in a pair programming exercise example. So they want to see your code habits, how you organize your code, and how you actually write out the solution that you've hopefully planned very well. So in terms of coding, this is also their first impression of you, and you want to make sure it's a good first impression. And one day the interviewer might even be reviewing your pull request. So this is the first glimpse they will have into what that experience will be like for them as well as their team. All right, so now we're going to talk about soft skills. So while the technical portion of the interview is really, really important, I would say most of the time, the soft skills might be even more important. After all, this team is actually interviewing you to work with you as a person, not just work with your code. So I'm going to share a few tips on soft skills too. So first things first, you should give a brief introduction about yourself. Again, this comes back to the point that you are going to be working with a team as a human being. So even when you meet people day to day, you introduce yourself first. You don't just start going and saying whatever you need to say. You say who you are first. So it's, first of all, it's just common courtesy. <laughs> but you also want the interviewer to remember you as a person, not just your code. So what I usually go with is name, what I'm doing now, past experiences, and then also sometimes just a fun fact about myself, because again, I want the interviewer to remember me as a person, not just how I tackle a technical interview. So why does the interviewer care? So at the end of the day, the interviewer is also a person and person to person social interaction is important. You are giving a first impression and you should make sure your first impression as a human being is also solid. All right, so my next soft skill tip is explain your solution as you go. At the end of the day, the interviewer is there to see you solve a problem, but how you clearly explain that problem and break it down and explain it to someone who might not have any, any idea what you're thinking is a very important skill. The interviewer wants to know that if you have an idea or a solution that you want to propose, for example, to a team, how you're able to break it down and explain it to others. So for example, if you say something like, I'm going to be tackling this problem by writing out function A, B, and C that each do this, this, and this, and then at the end of the day, I will have calculated X. Explaining that and how each of your parts work is a very, very important skill. If you can explain your solution and they understand it, 
in real life and even in this interview. That's where the discussion starts and where you can start talking to each other about ways you can improve it. Because the interviewer doesn't just want to see you code. You could just memorize snippets and have a solution that because you've drilled so many leak code questions, you know how to do it. But if you know how to explain it, that shows you really understand it. I'm pretty sure there's an Albert Einstein quote that says, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it. This is so true. If you can't explain it to your interviewer, you don't understand it. So you want to show that you understand the problem and the solution that you're building. Why does the interviewer care? The interviewer cares because it shows whether you understand the solution that you're about to build. And also, if you were to propose a solution to your team for a problem, how you would go about doing that. My next step is a bit underrated and I feel like people don't do this enough. You should talk out loud even if you're stuck. I'm sure everyone dreads getting stuck and when their head's spinning in circles or they don't know the next step to take. And it's really important to show that even in those times, you're able to communicate your thoughts. And honestly, it's totally okay to have a situation where you do get stuck. It happens more often than you think. The point is how you overcome being stuck. Don't just go silent and say nothing. You just talk about the ideas, talk about what's going through your head. If you get stuck on a problem, say you don't know how to calculate X, just say, I'm trying to think of a way to calculate X. It's not coming to me right now, but uh, I'm just spinning some ideas in my head and just list them out if you have any. There's actually something called rubber ducking in software engineering where people will literally take a rubber duck and they will talk to it about the current problem they're having and like what they have in their solution so far. And a lot of the time, just by talking to this rubber duck, they will come up with a solution or have a clearer understanding of why they're stuck and what they can do next. It's a similar situation where maybe just talking out loud to the interviewer about your problem will help you figure out the next step to take or what's wrong with your code. And if that doesn't work, the interviewer themselves will probably step in to help guide your thinking and help you figure out what it is you're stuck on. And at the end of the day, you do that with your teammates as well. You bounce ideas off of them. So do the same with your interviewer. I know it might not seem like it at the time, but the interviewer really wants you to succeed. They want to hire you. They want to work with you. And they just want you to showcase that you will be a good fit for them at the end of the day. So if you're stuck, most of the time they will help you. But to be able to help you, they need to know why you're stuck. They're most likely going to be considering this as a team exercise and will want to collaborate with you based on your thinking to help you go towards the right path for your solution. In some ways, when you get stuck is actually a really, really good learning. And it's a good experience for your interviewer too, to see how you tackle it instead of just blazing through the question without any problems whatsoever. Because as we all know, the hard times are what you grow from and the interviewer getting some insight into how you handle those hard times is really important. All right, my next tip is to share any ideas you have along the way. Sometimes in the middle of the interview or tackling the problem, you might have a really wacky idea of, oh wow, instead of tackling X in this way, I could tackle it in this way instead. It's really out there, but it's just an idea I'm tossing around in my head. Feel free to share those because it shows your interviewer that one, you can think of different avenues to solve a problem instead of just having one solution. And it also shows how you think creatively, even if it is wacky, just throw it out there. Whether or not it's the right thing to do, having an open mind when you think of a solution, because again, there could be multiple solutions to a problem. It shows how you problem solve as well and the kind of things that you keep an eye out for when you're iterating or implementing a solution. So why does the interviewer care? As an interviewer myself, I think it's awesome when candidates are able to bust out a solution, but also have different ways they could have solved the same thing. And it shows that you're not just thinking of one view on how to solve something. You're keeping an open mind. If an interview sees that in you, it shows that you're not married to a solution and you can think about problems in different ways. And my last tip is if an interviewer gives you feedback, please listen to it. At the end of the day, you will most likely be working on a team and seeing how you interact with your team, in this case, your interviewer is really important for them to know because it's an indicator of how you will act with a normal team. If you actively listen to your interviewer who's most likely probing you with questions to guide your answer or trying to get a better understanding of your code, it gives a good impression on how you will act with a team in those similar scenarios. And you'll also show that you're open to feedback, which is also very important when working on a team. Because most of the time you will be brainstorming a solution or if you're stuck on something, someone will give an input. If you're too rigid to be open-minded to feedback like that or ideas from others, that's very indicative of how you will be if you were to be closed-minded on a team. So why does the interviewer care? Again, it's, it's simple. How you incorporate feedback, especially most likely the interviewer is trying to help you if they're giving you feedback or trying to guide how you're writing your solution. If you're just refusing that feedback, it shows that you're closed-minded and you're only thinking of your solution even when help is being provided. So you want to show that you are actually a good team player and you will take in feedback from others. All right, and that's all my tips. But one thing to note, and this is really important, is that the interviewer at the end of the day wants you to succeed. As I said before, 
they want to hire you. They want you to work with them. They want to work with you. They just want to see if you are a good fit to work with them as well. Interviewers almost always want you to do well. That's another person that they can have on their team. Why would they not want someone on their team? <laughs> and right now in this day and age, technical interviews are the best way for interviewers and interviewees to get a glimpse into what it's like working at a specific company with the interviewee. It gives them insight into how they tackle a problem, how they work with each other, and the kind of code that they will be writing. So try to showcase the best of yourself when it comes to those things. But overall, I hope you found this helpful. I had a lot of fun making, and as you can see, I have a new setup, so I'm going to be trying to use this more if it turns out well in post-editing, which I hope it does. But overall, I hope you found this helpful. These are just my experiences in the tech world as an interviewer and interviewee, but I would love to hear your experiences in the comments below on either side. Thanks everyone for tuning in. And if you're interviewing, best of luck. You got this, you're gonna do great. Just believe in yourself and practice. Otherwise, have a great rest of your day. See you soon, friends.